Mr. Secretary, what is the smoking policy in the Pentagon? Well, we don't smoke in the Pentagon. Uh, well, like, let me uh, ask you a second question. Do you sell tobacco products in the Pentagon? Uh, in, we do in the Pentagon. Yeah. In, in our, in our uh, by the way, but, but let me see if I can jump ahead. Yeah, we have, a, you've been there. You, you know, we have different stores uh, down in the basement, retail stores. But let me jump ahead here to the, I think, maybe where you're going to the bigger issue here. I ordered a review of all our tobacco. This is part of our health base initiative. All of our, our tobacco sales everywhere throughout uh, the, enter the enterprise. The Navy already has in place, as you know, they don't sell it in PX's commissaries. They don't allow smoking on submarines. They're looking now at, at, at not even smoking on ships. Um, I've asked for a complete review. They'll be back to me in the next couple of months on on recommendations from our services on, on this specific policy, but it's let bigger me, than just selling it at the Pentagon. So let me suggest, it's been reported that we spend $1.6 billion a year on medical care of service members from tobacco-related disease and loss of work. $1.6 billion. That's we, should, we should also know that the rate of smoking among the military is 20% higher than the average American population. The rate of use of smokeless tobacco more than 400% higher than the average population. One out of three members of the military who use tobacco today say they started after they enlisted. Why? Well, we make it easy. And we make it easy because, for some reason, the Department of Defense decided to put in a discount for tobacco. So not only when you buy it at the exchange do you get uh, some uh, breaks in terms of local taxes and state taxes that aren't collected on the tobacco product, there's a required 5% discount. So it's a bargain. It may be the best bargain that the military sells to its men and women uniform, tobacco. Good God, at this point in our history, how can this be a fact? I'm glad you're doing this. I hope you'll hurry it along. Well, we will. The chairman may want to respond. I just want to make sure, Senator, that uh, the Joint Chiefs want to have a voice in this decision. We've asked a lot of our men and women in uniform, and uh, we, live, we lead an uncommon life by choice. But the, the, all the things you're talking about are legal, and they are accessible, and anything that makes anything less convenient and more expensive for our men and women in uniform, given everything we're asking them to do, I've got concerns about. I'm open-minded to the review, but I want to I want to make sure that you understand that the chiefs will need to have a voice on this because of the effect on the force. I, I think that's valid. Can you start your review with the following premise? Tobacco is the only product legally sold in America today which, if used according to manufacturer's directions, will kill you. I, I accept that. My father died of cancer, and I'm a cancer survivor, not from ta tobacco. But it is legal, and that's, you, that's, that is an issue for the broader Congress of the United States, not uniquely for the United States military. I understand that, but it, if it's legal, I guess someone could rationalize that we should allow you to smoke right here. We decided not to. The Pentagon decided not to. We're trying to set an example, and I think our men and women in uniform, if they have healthier and longer lives, would be a good example of a policy that we should follow.